Hazard identification and control with risk assessment is the third component of a safety management system. In this module, we'll give you an overview of the formal process of hazard identification and control and the role that risk assessment plays in helping us focus our resources and attention on the issues that matter most. A key concept we want you to take from this presentation is that hazard identification and control is an ongoing process throughout the life of our business, and it's designed to keep both you and the business healthy. As a company, we are required to identify, eliminate, or control hazards of the work and inform you about them. And as workers, you're also required to identify hazards, report them to us, and to use the hazard control measures we put into place. The formal hazard identification and control process is especially important for surveyors in the oil and gas industry. Not all hazards are immediately obvious. Some exposures can result in negative health consequences 20 years after the initial exposure. And on job sites with hazards being created by multiple work groups, capturing the big picture is an essential function of the formal process. Hazard identification can be as straightforward as it sounds when we look at our own work. We start by making a list of the known hazards of the work that we do as a company. We get that information from experience we've gained from incident investigations, publicly available statistics and reports, your expertise and knowledge, and updates from industry groups such as NFORM, Canada's Oil and Gas Safety Association. This list becomes our initial hazard inventory list. Not all the hazards we list will apply to every job title, of course. So we go down the company organizational chart and create a separate hazard inventory for every position within our company. After those hazard inventories are completed, we need to either eliminate or reduce the hazards we've identified using controls. We start by assessing the most effective hazard controls and work our way down the list. Let's use roadside work as an example with the hazard of a vehicle striking a worker. We can eliminate the hazard by closing the road entirely to all traffic. We can use engineering controls such as cement jersey barriers to physically protect you from the vehicles. Or we can use administrative controls like scheduling the work for slow traffic times and using signs, cones, and traffic control flaggers. We'll also specify personal protective equipment, such as high-vis vests, hard hats, safety glasses with side shields to protect you from minor injuries, but personal protective equipment is always used in addition to our hazard controls. Now we assess the probability these events might occur and the severity of the consequences if they do. We'll use the roadside work example again with the hazard of a vehicle striking a worker. Let's say the work scope is to survey a section of Alberta's Provincial Highway 69 outside Fort McMurray. Traffic is heavy, vehicle incidents are frequent, and the speed limit is 110 kilometers an hour. Based on our pre-job research, if we send you out to work on this stretch of road without any hazard controls, an incident is possible and the severity of your injuries would be catastrophic. When our risk assessment puts us in the red zone, we can't do the work without identifying controls that will allow us to complete the work safely. So we look at engineering controls, a row of cement jersey barriers to protect you from the impact of a vehicle. If a vehicle hits the jersey barrier, there is a chance you might be struck by light debris but your PPE would prevent or minimize any potential injury. This puts us in the green zone. It's important to note that without this step of looking at probability and severity of consequences when you look at hazard controls, you run the risk of focusing valuable time and energy on hazards with very unlikely or minor consequences instead of focusing on the more serious hazards. All companies in our industry are required by Canadian health and safety legislation to conduct some form of written hazard assessment. It's one of the ways to meet the responsibility to do everything reasonably practical to ensure your health and safety. 
An added benefit is that companies who choose a formal written hazard identification and control and risk assessment process can earn Canada's Certificate of Recognition for Safety Excellence. These are the companies first to be chosen for lucrative projects with the majors. This next video clip, publicly available from Enform, Canada's Oil and Gas Safety Association, is an excellent overview of the process. Welcome to Enform's info session video on element B of the core audit protocol, formal hazard and risk assessments. In this video, we will talk about the components of a formal hazard assessment system, inspections, site-specific hazard identification, and the key differences between them. Let's start with the formal hazard assessment. In element B, auditors are asked to score a company's hazard assessment system based on whether they have an inventory of positions or disciplines, whether they have a task inventory, whether they have identified and assessed each health and safety hazard for every task, and whether those hazards have been prioritized. Different companies may use a variety of terms to talk about the same thing. It is the concept, not the terms, that matter. You need to understand the concept, not the terms, to accurately judge a company's hazard assessment systems. The very first audit question in element B asks if there is an inventory of all positions or disciplines. Here you need to think company organizational chart. What are the positions listed on the company organizational chart? In order to ensure all the hazards are assessed, you need to have a systematic and comprehensive listing of each position, role, or discipline in the company. However, it is not the position that creates possible health and safety hazards. It is the tasks that workers do in those positions that may generate hazards. So, you need an inventory of all the possible tasks carried out in the company's operations. These are the jobs people in the company do, and typically the task can be broken down into a manageable number of steps. Now, this may seem obvious, but it needs to be documented. More than one position may perform the same or nearly identical tasks. For example, office workers in different departments may have different job titles, but they're likely all doing very similar tasks. And a person in one position might be doing multiple tasks in that position. So the hazard assessment process needs to start by connecting a comprehensive list of positions to a list of all the possible tasks. Now comes hazard identification and risk measurement. Health and safety hazards must be identified for each task. These hazards must then be individually assessed to determine the risk for each hazard. To determine risk, you need to look at a combination of factors like severity, frequency, or probability. A matrix is often the tool used to measure risk in a hazard. Once hazards are identified and the risks for each assessed, these health and safety hazards need to be prioritized. The reason why these should be ranked will be apparent in the next element, hazard control. The higher the rank, the more attention needs to be paid to implementing and maintaining hazard controls for these hazards. Finally, to close the loop on this system, is there a demonstrated and proven process for formal hazard assessment as new operations or modified operations or conditions arise? If a new position is created, if new tasks are introduced, or if new equipment is used, are the hazards identified and their risks assessed? Was this documented in some way? So that's formal hazard assessment. Remember, different terms might be used, but as an auditor, this is what you're looking for in a company's formal health and safety hazard assessment process. This formal system is distinct from two other items you will be reviewing for element B, inspections and site-specific hazard identification. So what's the difference between hazard assessments and inspections? Inspections are not hazard assessments, but they are an important part of a company's overall system of hazard assessment and control. Inspections provide a way for a company to check if its hazard assessment and hazard control measures are actually working. An inspection will involve being on the worksite, 
looking for compliance with the company's policies and ensuring controls are in place. It will observe actual worker behavior and it may pick up on new or unanticipated hazards. So inspections are not hazard assessments, but if done right, they drive continuous improvement into the company's formal hazard assessment and control systems. Inspections come in both formal and informal varieties. Formal inspections are typically scheduled with written, itemized requirements and checklists. Informal inspections are regular and ongoing and may be included in job descriptions or built into tasks. So we've looked at formal hazard assessments and inspections. What about site-specific hazard identification? While formal hazard assessment is focused on individuals and their specific tasks, site-specific hazard identification looks at a specific operation or work environment to identify the hazards these will present. It may be carried out on the site itself or in a pre-job meeting before going to the site or a combination of both. The key is that it is carried out before the project or job begins or when a change occurs. Typically, there are formalized processes or checklists associated with this type of hazard identification. And communication is a key component of this type of assessment. So you'll see terms like tailgate meeting or pre-job safety meeting associated with site-specific hazard identification systems. So looking at the big picture, formal hazard assessment systematically captures everything workers are doing and identifies, assesses, and prioritizes the hazards presented by their tasks. Site-specific hazard identification looks at the hazards presented by a particular operation or worksite before the job starts or when things change. Inspections are interested in both workers and their work sites. Unlike hazard assessment and site-specific hazard identification, inspections usually take place with operations already underway. They provide feedback on whether the hazard identification, risk assessments, and controls are working and adequate. Hazard identification and assessments anticipate what an individual will do or how an operation will proceed and controls are based on that. Inspections look at what individuals are doing and how operations are proceeding and enables adjustments on the fly and adjustments to the hazard assessments and controls. Remember, companies will create systems using their own terminology that makes sense for their operations. But as auditors, it is important you understand the concepts behind formal hazard assessments, inspections, and site-specific hazard identification. Understand the concept and you'll be able to evaluate your client's hazard assessment systems quickly and accurately. Thank you for listening. Check back for more info session videos on other core related topics. Let's recap this module briefly. Hazard identification and control is our shared responsibility. We start by identifying the known or anticipated hazards for each job position, such as instrument operator or survey manager. We conduct a risk assessment to prioritize our resources. We identify hazard controls to eliminate or reduce the hazards. And this formal system not only helps make your workplace safer, it gives us a competitive business advantage. Please continue to Module 5, Hazard ID Tools, to learn about the specific tools we use at LW Survey Canada and your involvement with those tools.